Hey guys, Dan Fool, Mr. Grey, Dan Dalf the Grey, and back with a different kind of video this time in the new setup, the not so permanent setup, but you know, whatever. We're gonna look at the Mosul Orb. Now, I was asked to look at this uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I said, yeah, I'll look at it, no problem. Full disclosure, I am an expert in nothing, but I drink and I know things. But I always say, I'm, I'm not a scientist, never have been, probably never will be, unless I get that doctorate I've been chasing for the last 25 years. No, don't worry. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. How can the DOD experts have classed this unknown, unexplained, and then all of a sudden you come up with some explanation? I'm not, I'm just giving my opinion. I'm just giving my opinion based on the 25 plus years I have uh, experience in film, video, and photography. Especially video editing and photography manipulation. And some basic physics. That's all it is. This is my opinion. Who bloody knows? But anyway, so the Mosul Lob, the US government released it about a month ago and it's just a basic picture of in Mosul, which I'm fairly sure is Iraq. I apologize if it's not. And instead of an orb, or sort of a, a top-down aerial view from a helicopter, jet, it's about 700 odd feet up in the air. It could be more, I don't know. And then in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little orb. Now I've Deliberately avoided everyone else's videos going into this because most of them say alien spotted in Mosul. Mine's not going to say that, <laughs> but I didn't want to sully my opinion of what I think is going on with this photograph. The photograph is taken from a three second video that the US government released, I think from some footage but for whatever reason they haven't released, but they've released a still. And this was in the declassified documents recently uh, put out by the US government. And you know, people are like, that's a UFO. What else could it be? Well, going on my experience, it's all about perspective. Now, I was gonna make it like a diagram and everything, and I thought, I can't be asked. <laughs> Maybe I should, I don't know. I should have had props ready, but I don't. So I'm gonna use this as the happy little sun, and that as the Mosul orb. And this area is Mosul. Right? So in the photograph, you have light hitting the orb from the top down, from the sunlight above, obviously. And you have the houses in, in down be further below. And apparently in the three second clip, this little orb flies past the screen in three seconds. So it's going pretty fast, whatever it is, right? But going on to simple physics, light physics, right? You look at that photograph, you can see the entire houses down below are completely engulfed in sunlight. The sun looks like it's at the height of noon. Every single building there, is engulfed in sunlight. There is shadows there. Looking at that photograph, the sun is at least to the top right. To the top right, it sounds so stupid. <laughs> the sun is about one o'clock in the afternoon. Let's put it that way, right? Maybe two o'clock. No, I'd say one o'clock actually. Going with the shadows. Now the shadow on the orb does correspond to that. So whatever that orb is, is physically in the shot. It's physically there. It hasn't been added in. It's physically there. But if you look at the photograph, and you look at the sun beaming down on those humongous buildings down below, there's no light to fall off. Whereas the orb, that's the happy little sun, he's up there, the orb is there, right? So this is Mosul, that's the sun. So if you were going saying that as a, an, a UFO passing through the streets or like 100 feet above the street, that's where roughly the position of the sun 99 million miles away, or one astronomical unit we call it, and that's the orb. So the orb is about, the sun is about two o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon. Should be that way, corresponding to the photograph. And the orb is traveling at speed past this Mosul street. But like I said, if that orb was 100 feet or 200 feet, even 300 feet above the ground level, the light being cast on that orb would be engulfing the entire orb. You would not see shadow underneath it. You'd see a little like um, edge feathering of a shadow. But if that orb was physically 300 feet down, you would, the, the sunlight would be engulfing the entire orb. Whereas in this photo it's not. So that tells me that that orb is really close to the lens. I always say this is close, close to the lens perspective stuff. But we know this because the way the light hits that orb. Now I don't know what the orb is, but I should say that. It could be something flying off the helicopter. It could be an amorphous blob of a bird because it's too close to the lens and the focus is down on the street. You know, the focus matters when it comes to this kind of stuff. Or it could be a water drop, I don't know. But whatever that is, just a couple of feet away from the, I don't know if it's a helicopter, whatever, right? We'll just call it the 
We'll call it a helicopter because I don't know. Or jet. I don't know. But whatever that it, it orb is, is only a couple of feet away from the camera taking that photo or taking the video, I should say. Now, this is a rough, very rough, not to scale, believe it or not. That's the orb, right? So f the further away this orb gets, the more light captures around it and the less shadow you see. But if I go closer to the light source, as you can see, the light gets more vibrant on the surface of the, um, I don't know if you can see that by the way, but the light gets more vibrant on the surface of the orb and the shadow comes becomes more prominent because it's closer to the light source. So that tells me that whatever that is, is closer to the camera as, a, as opposed to down near the street or even a couple of hundred feet above the street, which tells me that's just something really close to the lens like I said, possibly a water droplet on the actual dome of the camera because these cameras on these onboard helicopters they usually have like a dome protective seal and uh, not seal but like a casing. I mean that could just be because in the video apparently that's only three seconds long that whiz is past in three seconds. The helicopter or jet is going at speed so when your know, conversation gathers on these uh, camera casings it's just going to be a water droplet just rolling past and that's pretty much what I can see with that. Like I said, I'm no expert. I am no expert, I'm no scientist, but I do know some things. But let me know what you think about the Moore's Law. It's an interesting photo and I know the the DOD, DOD the MOD, no, Department of Defense is America, isn't it? The, the, the DOD, they say it's unexplained. I don't know why they don't just release the three second footage. I think it would explain it 100%. Maybe they're trying to throw off actual UFO hunters, I don't know. Or they're just trying to stir some shit with the public to say, oh look, see, we release UFO photos. So they, so they stop looking at Area 51 with the real aliens. We all know what you're doing. That is my opinion on the Mosul Lobe, just going on basic science, basic photography, and it's all about perspective. The orb is not down by the street. The orb is really close to the lens and it's probably about that big because of the light fall off is too concentrated on the dome of the orb. And that's it. Leave a comment you think I'm full of shit. Leave a comment you think I may be onto something here. I don't know. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you like this video. Leave a sub if you're new to my channel. I do this quite often. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go look up to the sky and see some real UFOs. One day. Fingers crossed. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.